I recorded my wife confessing to her affair last night. Simply put, I don't know what to say or how to feel. Please be patient with my English, which is not my native language. So I've been married to this lady for two years, and we've been in a serious relationship for 10 years. We have a long-distance relationship. Every year, I get to visit her for two months. For years, I've been dubious about her friendship with a specific male buddy. I just discovered that they were having an affair. Needless to say, it utterly annihilated me. My wife informs me that she has been burdened with shame and regret for the previous three-slash-four months. The weird part is that she acknowledges that they were merely pretty close friends before our marriage, but things went awry after our marriage. I'm not sure whether I'm in a hole or not. Perhaps I am. But I discreetly videotaped our chat last night, and she plainly admits to everything. I'm not sure why I did it. We've definitely discussed divorce but since we don't have children, it should be very painless if we go through with it. She is also guaranteed that once the divorce is finalized, she would not make any demands on my part, so I doubt I'll ever have to prove her adultery in court. Nonetheless, I recorded her confession. Thank you for putting up with my foolish and boring statements. I just needed to get this off my chest. Story 2. Cheating fiancé raises the bar on cheating. It was just revealed that my now-wife cheated on me years ago. It occurred while we were together on a weekend away with some of our close friends, just after we were engaged. At the time, the person with whom she cheated was someone I would have called a friend. He wasn't as connected to the group as the other 8-9 individuals we were with at the time, but on the surface, I'd call him a buddy. Furthermore, he is the brother of one of my wife's greatest friends, who was also there this weekend. We went abroad with several of our best friends. We were all in our late 20s. We did this together very often. We'd spent the day and early evening drinking and socializing. Then, a few hours after we had BBQ'd some meals, a buddy and I realized we needed additional supplies. I planned to dash to the store while my sober pal drove. Just as we were ready to depart, I was informed that my fiancé had gone to the shop with the subject, seemingly sneaking off, when there was no reason for being secretive, unless I was informed he was reportedly sober and safe to drive to the shop, and she needed smokes. She wasn't a smoker, but she did consume on occasion while inebriated back then. When I heard this, I was overcome with the most unsettling sensation of apprehension. Not just because of the circumstances, but also because of a deep intuitive gut sense. I've never been a particularly insecure, jealous, or dominating person. Though I'm sure it has altered on some levels since then. I called her to make sure they had ice on top of whatever else they were going to get. There was no response. I tried his phone number, but there was no answer. Other friends tried contacting them to tell them to get bags of ice, but they didn't respond. By then, it was apparent that I wasn't the only one who saw a possible problem here. Unease was visible on her and my friends' faces after many efforts to phone each of them failed. Everyone slinked away, I'm guessing in reaction to knowing and slash or witnessing what was going on in my head. The awareness that I was not the only one connecting connections here was intolerable. Some points were circumstantial, while others were simply driven by institution and were much too significant to ignore. I recall dialing her phone 20-30 more times and pacing around the side of the house where we were staying like an F. I went from having a very wonderful time. With my closest friends to living in a dreadful dream, with nothing to base my decisions on other than unanswered phone calls, institutions, and the expressions on a handful of our friends' faces when their calls were also ignored. She had been gone for more than an hour. The shop is just around 10 minutes away. Again, this occurred years ago. I was just made painfully aware that she did, in fact, cheat that night, which she affirmed by stating so but then playing dumb on the facts and fumbling on the excuses for why those information are too foggy to reveal. While it indicates a lot about her character, or lack thereof, it seems fair to conclude that my receiving it and not walking away that night, I likely only enhanced her resolve to dishonesty. When she returned, I confronted her, he discreetly dropped her off and went so she wouldn't have to face me the rest of us after what they had just done. After failing to communicate that night, I retreated inside my thoughts and consumed massive quantities of whiskey and THC in an attempt to alleviate this terrible sensation. I'll never forget waking up the following morning with her next to me, understanding it wasn't all a horrible dream. If my suspicions are correct, this lady is the world's most sociopathic ever, doing what I believe she did and then laying in bed, next to me the same night. Even though I put myself into denial, I always knew something horrible had happened, 
but I shut it off in my head. Probably as a weak protection mechanism. We had such a lengthy and deep connection at the time, eight years, six years living together, just engaged, that she slept next to me in bed hours later. I couldn't get my brain around the idea that she was capable of doing anything that outlandish, so I convinced myself that the reason it appeared so incredibly unintelligible and messed up was because it was all in my imagination. I gradually convinced myself that I had recalled an exaggerated version of events for whatever reason, but in the days and weeks that followed, I continued contacting her about it. I was told I was incorrect, that I was insane for even considering it. That was the story from the minute she returned after betraying me so shamelessly until days ago when it rose to the surface, to the point where I was informed I am a crazy for making such claims. She even brought it up while we were hanging out with her friend his sister, saying, Can you believe he thinks I genuinely do anything like that? Come on. I'll never forget how he used his sister as a pawn to conceal her conduct from me and persuade me I was insane. She kept it a secret from her friend until I found out for sure. If I were this buddy, she'd be dead to me. He avoided me like the plague after that, and I told myself that it was because he had heard of my suspicions and, being innocent, he didn't want to become involved. He told his pals that he was afraid of me, should have seen it for what it was. I'm curious as to why. Scum. It's worth emphasizing that this person was conceited and a well-known womanizing narcissist. He even boasted about prostitutes and having a high-priced coke habit. While sharing this will almost certainly make me look even more insane for not running as far away from her as I could that night, even though I was there for it. It seems fictional when I write it down. This dirtbag even bragged to all of the guys when we were busting his balls hours before that he is in fact such a legit that he is likely littered with STD and slash or HIV from all of the unprotected he had. This is the real kicker. We joked about his remark with my fiancé and his sister that day, so she was completely aware of what he said, yet chose to cheat on me with him. The specifics of how far it progressed are unknown. There was no intercourse, according to her and another individual with whom he related the account. But, although it's fair to say I'm an idiot, I'm not dumb enough to tolerate anything less than their engaging in the most disgusting and humiliating types of unprotected. It would be absurd to suppose she couldn't accomplish it all if she was capable of achieving what she did. This piece of human garbage is one of those stereotypical D-bags that personifies the caricature of an arrogant misogamist who believe his money elevates him above all others. His funders are rather immaterial in this context, since I did do well myself. I can't understand how someone who could do something like this could do it, now that I've been forced to confront it. Just days after saying yes to their fiancé, seven years of cohabitation, and be able to go on in a marriage while still looking me in the eyes and holding this secret. Not to mention God knows how many other terrible secrets. I can't think of any reasons to defend the idea that she isn't slash, wasn't or will never be capable of being unfaithful in the past, present, or future. My denial enabled her to sweep it under the rug, and she slept well as a result. It frightens me. I don't know how to absorb this stuff if a fiancé can cheat while spending a weekend away with close friends and do it in such a casual and reckless manner that everyone there is uncomfortable forced to see these red flags. All of the characteristics I believed characterized a strong-willed person were, in fact, features of someone who does whatever they want, whenever they want with little regard for the effect on others. Particularly when we were in our twenties and alcohol was involved. Not talking whenever she did anything I didn't think was okay, or even when I thought something was. Wrong. Merely for adultery, she just denied it, and when denying doesn't work due to witnesses and collateral damage. She just calls me crazy and buries the memory till in some situations she has persuaded herself she didn't do anything wrong. For a long period, I suffered with despair and the effects of gaslighting. I don't believe in the notion of being a victim. Instead, I believe in the concept of cause and effect. I didn't cause her to do anything. It was all a result of nature slash nurture. I also don't believe in directing our efforts toward things over which we have no influence as individuals. I do, however, have some choice over whether I allow myself to be subjected to enduring a nightmare like this again.